Hickok 45 here, and you know me, give me a good old six shot revolver, and I'm happy. Oh yeah, bowling pin. Two liter. <laughs> look at that. Oh look, a pot to smoke. Uh, 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 take my shit. <laughs> Another two liter. Oh, I'm empty. Hey, I fired eight shots. So when I have eight shots, I'm even happier. Yes, we have the Ruger Red Hawk. Holds eight rounds. Count them. Look at all those holes. There's eight in there. Eight in the cylinder. And uh, we had it filled up. So six is good. Maybe eight's better. That's the cool thing about revolvers these days. They, they're not really six shooters anymore, are they? They could be five, six, seven, eight, and maybe even on up if it's a 22 to 12 or so. So anyway, this is, okay. There was some of this uh, 38, 129 green Hydra shocks, okay? Thought I'd start out light, give myself a break, and then we'll just go ahead and throw some Magnums in, which is what these are, and they're pretty warm. Now these are in a moon clip and that comes with the firearm. Believe it or not, there's three of those that come with the firearm. And I don't mean take more of them out. I'm not gonna use them up and bend them for you because somebody will win this on the auction at eGunner. And uh, you can get more of the, the moon clips, I think at the Ruger website and maybe elsewhere, I'm not sure. They're available, but they hold eight and uh, they seem to work. I'm right in there. So you could have a firearm with eight rounds and then eight more ready to go. Or 16, 24, 32. You could just go right on up, right? Okay, that's all my math skills will take me through. But uh, an eight shot revolver, now it is a little bit of a chunk, okay? It's got a little weight to it. Uh, <laughs> but that's nice when you're shooting the big boomers like this one. Let's see if I can hit that thing. Wow. It's hard. Let's blow up this thing right here. Oh, I'm, I'm, I got water on the pot so it won't smoke very well. <laughs> Look at that two liter hiding behind that target. Let's see if I can pop him. Probably explode him all over the target. Oh man. Put another one on. Look at the misses. Wow. I'll see if the point of impact's a little different with a hot 357. Wow. Those things are, are pretty warm, but they don't really hurt you. I've got one left in this particular firearm. Let's do a little bowling. <laughs> They're pretty warm, but this gun weighs 44 ounces, okay? Uh, it's actually a little more, I think, than 44 ounces. So it's, it has some weight to it. And it's just a two and three quarter inch barrel, as you can tell. So you don't have a lot of firearm there other than the frame and cylinder. It's even a round butt. And it's, uh, it's, that's what it is. A round butt, short barrel, uh, Ruger Red Hawk, 357 Magnum, eight shots it holds. I, this may just be the the tallow edition. I'm not sure. It's a, I think it's available from Ruger. I don't know. They they got so many different uh, distributor editions and that sort of thing. It's hard to keep up with them all, but it is available now. And I think it will probably be available if it's not already in some different barrel lengths. Uh, I would prefer it. And as much as I like short barrels, you know me. I'm a three inch barrel freak. I'm a freak in a lot of ways but i really like a three inch barrel on a on a revolver generally speaking and uh, that's about what this is it looks a lot shorter than that doesn't it it's uh, just i guess a quarter of an inch shorter right according to my math math and uh it seems even shorter than that for some reason because it's just such a chunky little firearm i would like this firearm better i think in a four inch maybe even a five I've got these other firearms out here just to compare. You know, this is a Red Hawk, the same <laughs> firearm basically. Okay, you got the, the 44 Magnum Red Hawk mine, and you have the same frame. You just have a non-fluted cylinder and a fluted cylinder. But look at the difference, just because you've got a square butt uh, grip and then you've got a longer barrel. So, but that's the firearm that you're you're talking about here. 
Uh, this one actually feels more comfortable <laughs> to me. It really does. But if you want a, a smaller revolver, and a lot of you love Ruger's, you know, that's mine. I like Ruger's fine. This one's mine, GP100. Uh, I don't buy firearms I don't like, so I'm not gonna bash Ruger's. Uh, those are mine. I've got some other Ruger's. And uh, some of you have almost nothing but Ruger's. There, there are people who just live and breathe Ruger's, uh, whether it's their semi-auto pistols or the revolvers, their rifles or whatever they are. And uh, if you want a small, not small frame, but a small, let's say a short barrel revolver uh, that holds a lot of rounds, this might be your ticket. It's got the round butt. Now, I, this is uh, my in-frame holster. So I don't know if this guy's even still in bit O'Rourke, I think it is, but that, uh, so it, it kind of rides all right in the in-frame holster and the, the Red Hawk does. And it's supposed to fit in any Red Hawk holster, which it should, it's the same frame, same size. So that's a boom, holster it would work in. All right, so you could carry it. It's just got a little weight to it. Let me put it back in there. Uh, 44 ounces and with ammo, it's uh, I think it was like 49 or something. I weighed it, uh, depending on what weight your bullet is. So you got some weight on you, but uh, yeah, pull that thing out and boom. So 357, it's not a round to sneeze at. It's got some power, penetration. Some people like to hunt with it. If you're in the mountains, you know, it's, uh, it, it does most of what a 44 will do, you know, because you're going to get the penetration. There's a lot of ammo. A the variety of ammo with a 40 or a 357 is one of the attractions of, of that uh, cartridge for, for sure, that chambering, because you can shoot 38 Special, what that is, uh, 38 Special plus P, some kind of carry ammo. Uh, you can carry a hotter 357 Magnum. There's even 180, I think even 200 grain bullets available for the 357, maybe even heavier. So, you know, there's all kinds of things available that would fire in this and it holds eight rounds. So, and I think there's speed loaders for it. And I forget the names of the companies, but there are uh, like a couple maybe that make speed loaders. There's so many different revolvers now that hold like this Smith & Wesson uh, 686 plus holds seven rounds and you, know, you got six in there and GP 100. So the market has uh, come to meet the needs of some of these revolvers now that hold multiple rounds. They're not six shooters anymore. Right. So that's something. Uh, what else about the firearm? I'm going to load up some gentle rounds. How about these? These are really gentle. These little 38 special lead bullets. And again, that's the neat thing about a revolver. It doesn't matter what the contour of the bullet is. It will, you know, it's fine. It will load, it will shoot. It's not going to hang up on a feed ramp. Of course, these wouldn't hang up on a feed ramp. Pointed bullet. Uh, so I was saying something there that was really important and I lost my train of thought. That happens to me when I pick up a, a round, <coughs> I get, <coughs> excuse me, preoccupied <laughs> with it. But uh, the firearm has adjustable sights, the rear sights are adjustable. Uh, you got a red ramp up there and you can, uh, they have other options for the sights, I think at their website. I think you can buy them there, I believe. I made different colors maybe and interchange those if you want to. Uh, there's probably other grips that would fit it. Uh, so, and you can tell I raised the rear side a good bit because it was shooting low for me. So I raised that rear sight. And if you're not careful when you fire this, it will shoot low for you. You have a tendency to pull down on it. You definitely want to practice with it. Uh, once we shoot the cowboy, I told John we'll pick on him. You see where he shot it and he hit the cowboy in the leg. Yeah. He claims that's where he was aiming. That's probably where I'll hit. <laughs> uh, he was shooting magnums. I'm shooting light loads. Well, these are really pleasant. I'm going to try a two liter. Oh, to the left, I think. Woohoo! It's really easy to pull it left if you're not careful. Or even if you are careful. Let's put one on the gong if we can. Ah, it went low, I saw it. All right, let's bring it up a little bit. I'm still a little low. Click, oh, you see that flinch? All right, we'll put one on the gong. I uh, it's tending to go a little bit low. As I said, there's a there's also though that uh, that inclination to pull down on for some reason. I don't know if it's the the grip or what it might be. Let's try some plus P's over there. 
What else about the gun? It's in a satin uh, finish, stainless, all stainless. And you know, it's got that Red Hawk lock up, three places it locks up, front, rear, you know, and everything. It's a strong revolver. You should be able to, to uh, shoot about any kind of ammo in this thing that's not overloaded, but some pretty warm 357. And it's gonna be pretty loud, uh, maybe, <laughs> with that short barrel. Oh, let's try the gong again. That's smart Alec. There we go, even saw it move. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. I, I really haven't shot it across the hill, I don't think yet. I've shot it around here two or three different times some. I'll try the red plate. Uh, now let's knock something over if we can. Let's try a pig's up there in the top row. See if I can see where I miss so I can zero in on it before I'm empty. A bit low. Still low. Okay, finally got the sights up higher. Let's try that other pig. I think I might be empty. I have not been counting. Yep, empty. Okay. Whew. So that's kind of what I do. Uh, you're sort of here at the living reality show. Just experiment and different ammo. Uh, I haven't done much with this firearm. I, that's why I was admitting that shooting over there to know where to hold with different rounds and that that sort of thing i didn't want to mess with the sights too much i i've got them i think for i think they're pretty much right on with real 357 ammo so let's try some more of that uh i think but they're close anyway so not a big problem to to get them right where you want them but that kind of what i do i'll just shoot around over there somewhere where i can see the misses and uh, tell whether I'm shooting high or low and uh, adjust accordingly and then decide whether or not I actually want to move the sights or uh, is it me flinching a little bit because sometimes you'll I think I was doing that some you'll uh, be shooting low and think it's the sights but it's really you or me the old low left thing right if you're right-handed so these are 357s let me try the gong I'm telling where it'll go. Oh man, get those ears in tight. Ouch. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try uh, some cowboys here. Both cowboys. Got some blast. You think this will knock the arms on the uh, tree around? Let's try that red one on the top. Popped right on around there, didn't it? See if it'll go back. <laughs> Without hesitation. Two more rounds. See, I thought I was empty. It's because I'm thinking six. I'm oriented to six. I'll put two more on the paper. Man, those are loud. 357, all right, keep these straight. I won't shoot too much more. I don't want to wear out your firearm if, uh, <laughs> if you're uh, competing for it on an um, e-gunner. But uh, what do I think of this thing? Wow. Well, if you do a lot of fishing and you uh, need a boat anchor, no, I'm not gonna use the old Ruger boat anchor joke. I wouldn't do that. Uh, but it is heavy. It's a chunk. And like I said, it, it just begs for a longer barrel, I think. This particular revolver. As much as I like three-inch barrel, look at it. Both those are three-inch, and I've got two or three more three-inch barrel revolvers. But in this one, it's so big, so thick, so chunky, I, I just would want it a little bit bigger. Maybe three and a half to four inches, I think. And then anything on out, because, uh, you know, this Red Hawk has, what, seven, seven and a half, I guess, the, the Red Hawk is? It just feels great, feels fine, and shoots great. 
Uh, so that would be my negative on it, I suppose, is just that wait for what you get. It would appeal, I think, mostly to revolver lovers uh, who want a, a powerful revolver that you know, holds more than six rounds, obviously. You know, it's got some capacity to it, it's got a lot of power to it, and it's a Ruger. You like Rugers, and you don't mind the weight. You got a good holster to pack around in. You, know, you might really like it in this barrel length. I don't know. Don't know you, fortunately, right? Fortunately, you don't know me. <laughs> But anyway, uh, positive, other negatives and positives, uh, gosh, I don't know. It, I mean, it is what it is. You know, uh, the old classic line, it's solid, uh, well-built. It's, uh, it's probably going to hold up to thousands and thousands of, of rounds, even like that. In fact, let's shoot a few more thousand. No, nah, at least eight more, okay? Now, these warm 357 Magnum rounds, one of my favorite cartridges, 357 Magnum. It was the, let's see, no, it wasn't the first centerfire pistol I ever owned. First one was a 45 Colt, you imagine that? But my first double action revolver in my life, 1973, uh, that I purchased, that I owned, period, was a 357 Magnum, the model 19, Smith & Wesson. Okay, we've got a little more bowling we could do here, don't we? Oh, get those ears in tight. Boom. Wow, <laughs> knocks them off. Oh, there's some cinder on that stump. There was some cinder. Yeah. Click. All right. It, I mean, the, the sights are right on, I think, with the 357 Magnum, as uh, you can see there. I was, in a weak moment, I was actually getting a good trigger let off and wasn't flinching and uh, put about three there semi-close together. So I don't always do that, but I did right there. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Is there anything else I should do with it? I have some tools out here. Sometimes if you're shooting a revolver and, and if you shoot 38s and 357s and all that, you could end up with some grit in there. And I just like to have something handy in case I need it for that. And I was thinking I might even adjust the sights if I needed to, but I'm, I'm not going to do that because it's uh, pretty much right on with 357 Magnum. And I don't know about yours. You may own one or you're about to buy one, but you might take a look and you can see how high I've raised that rear sight for it to be pretty much right on at you know 20 yards or whatever 25 yards with 357 magnum ammo that might tell you a little bit they're probably all similar i would guess made on the same machinery i would i would expect so uh anyway that's uh the 357 the relatively new uh shot 357 uh, red hawk and uh, i'm sure a lot of you are waiting for it to be available in a gun shop near you or somewhere online wherever you you purchase uh, because uh, there's been a lot of buzz about it and a lot of talk about it. And I've had this one uh, since before we went to SHOT Show, actually. Uh, so I've been shooting a little bit off and on, and uh, we're just now getting around to bringing it out for you. And uh, it's a beautiful day, and it's a great day to shoot a revolver. So, so be sure you read the description in the video, and, uh, and you listen very carefully to what I say because, uh, you know, I don't say a lot of things that are very intelligent, but uh, occasionally I'll say something that, that might be useful to you. You never know and you want to catch it if that happens, okay? So the 357 uh, Ruger Red Hawk 8-shot uh, is a pretty nifty little revolver. It's a little heavy for my taste for what I would carry, uh, but, uh, you know, that's just me. It's kind of a neat gun. Life is good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. While I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing, and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience, even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. 
Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.